Hello. In this uh, video, I want to showcase you and demonstrate you my workflow on um, how I write my academic papers and, and now my master thesis at the moment using PaperPile. Um, got pretty much attracted and used to PaperPile as a very convenient web service to manage my papers, my academic references and to use them in conjunction with Google Docs. So what you see here on this in this browser window is Paperpile, the online application. So you just can access it, paperpile.com. And uh, as you can see here, it automatically connects to my Google account. So if you're familiar with, with you know, traditional reference managers like Mendeley, Zotero, um, you will notice that you know it, it, it gave me the, f the familiar feeling of having my paper papers organized either in folders or using labels. Um, still haven't quite figured out which one, which way is a be better way to to categorize my papers. Currently, I'm trying labels for my master's thesis. Uh, you can search for papers. For example, what I'm currently working on is household food waste. And then you get all your references, title, you can display the abstracts that I'm quite frequently using. You can view the PDF if you, you know, if you want to read into the document. You can put some, write some notes here. Um, what you can't do in the enhanced viewer is you cannot search. So if you want to search your PDF, you have to open the PDF in plain view, which is basically the Google Chrome, it's in that case what I'm using. Uh, viewer and then you can use then you can use here the, the you know the search function to look for the keywords so this is basically paper pile itself but how do you now actually use it in um, you know in order to write your papers so let's switch to another window this is Google Docs so what I'm doing is at the moment is my final thesis project on household food waste. And um, the way I'm structuring my thesis right now is using different Google Docs for the several chapters. Um, then what I'm doing is I open them in a new tab, I start writing um, and then use PaperPile to, as you can see here, uh, add my references. So what I'm doing right now, for example, I'm looking at the scientific background and previous studies and trying to you know create a literature review. Here's already like the you know the references that I already um, reviewed and here in the bottom this is actually the ones that I didn't finish today anymore um, that I would like to do tomorrow but you know in order to showcase now how to work with it I would just like quickly demonstrate it. It's let's let's take that reference Stefan et al 2013. That's the one I would like to look at. Stefan 2013, as you can see, you know, it auto it already searches automatically while typing uh, and gives me the reference. What I can basically see is the office. I've labeled it already. Yes, of course, because I, you know, I wanted to review it. I can mark several, you know, certain publications as start, which then goes into that folder. Um, it shows me the journal which is which is published in it. You know the type of reference. It's a journal article. It's also filed in that folder which I did a couple of you know months earlier. Um, not using folders at the moment. And um, so basically for the review, I'm just quickly screening the the abstract. Look at it and then you know okay it, they use a survey as a method la, 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 um, to you know to to be written out in, in entire sentences later. Okay, so in that in, in the here see in that you know in that example I already entered the uh, references. But what if you writing a sentence? Um, this is my statement to be backed up by a reference of Stefan. Then what I do is I press Strong or Control depending on your keyboard Alt and P which opens this, um, I think they use a Google Apps uh, script in the background, Google Docs script. 
Uh, and now I type my reference, Stefan 2013. There it comes. Enter it. Depending now on, you know, if I want to use an insight or in sentence citation or a citation at the end, I can modify for citation. I can add page numbers, 45. Now, watch, watch how it automatically displays you the example, how it, how it would look like. 32, you can see it. Um, I can add a prefix C and example. I can suppress the author, then Stefan at all would not be displayed. This is the way I would insert my citation in that example. Um, so in, in that sense, using Paperpile for me is a very convenient way because I I, I tend to like a simple workflow and um, just focus on pure writing. My studies is social science based. Um, so in that sense, I don't do any any complicated calculations. And if I do them, then I use LibreOffice um, or GNU PSPP, which is the open source equivalent to um, SPSS. And then I just put you know put my data into the Google Docs and start writing. It automatically saves my changes all the time. I can quickly share it with someone, get comments, which is basically what I'm doing at the moment. Um, I created a, a WordPress page for my master thesis to welcome everybody to reflect and give me comments. Um, so basically I'm providing these thesis chapters and this is just a link as you can see in the bottom left of a browser window, it's a link to my Google Docs. So basically everybody can view it and um, and comment on them. Uh, so feel free to do it if you if you're you know if you have knowledge on household food waste. <laughs> Welcome it. Huh. So what can what else can I tell about how I use PayPal in my writing? Well a big obstacle for me uh, personally um, in Google Docs is um, tables. Um, I, I, you know, I just frequently use tables because I like them as a as a, as a way of, of quickly showing uh, important figures and numbers. And um, but you know, if if you have worked with Google Docs before, the, the default tables are just not enough at the moment, like the table tools. Um, what I found is a, a way of of making my tables a bit more comprehensive. Um, and that is basically by installing the add-on Lucid chart diagrams. Um, with Lucid chart, the essential feature that it gives me is I, you know, I work on a table. I might update it, and um, without Lucid chart, I would have to reinsert the image all the time manually. So let's say I, you know, I create a table in Excel or in LibreOffice Calc, and I would have to take a screenshot of it, and then always manually add it back to my Google Docs. With Lucid Chart, as you can see it, it can automatically update insert diagrams, which is really handy because I have them in a separate Lucid Chart. Here, this is my household food waste per country. I can update my table here. And once I'm done, so let's say I'm making 24 out of it. Yeah, just should not, just should not forget about changing it back. Um, then I go to the chart diagrams, update into the diagrams, and now as you can see, the magic will happen. It will automatically insert diagrams updated. Yes, I know. It will automatically insert the figures, the waste figures for Finland. There you go. I'm quickly switching it back. So, what else do I do basically with paper pile, loot chart, and Google Docs to write my thesis? Um, of course. If I'm, you know, if if I look for references, what I usually do as a first step is just using Scholar, and then I would screen new references, household food waste, and there's another very very appealing feature to me for, um, which makes it a very strong argument to use Paperpile for me. It nicely integrates into my workflow, so um, and especially in Google Scholar and also Science Direct and uh, Scopus, so. Um, as you can see, um, Paperpile can automatically detect which of the references shown here already in my library. So this one is in my library already. Mm, this one is in the library already. I can 
I've directly opened the PDF. It opens in a new tab, straight from my library. Um, or I can view the entry in PaperPile and then it automatically switches back to the tab that was already opened. So in that sense, it really acts as an app and not only just this, you know, opens new tabs constantly over time um, and automatically selects a reference. Um, so PaperPile has really strong features. There's, depending on your workflow, you know, there's much more to discover. You can search online directly from within PaperPile, which I never really do. Um, I s sometimes um, attach PDFs to documents, to my references. Sometimes the import fails or, you know, I just import a reference from here without having enabled my proxy before. In that case, it automatically fetches um, the reference itself, so the left part, but it cannot fetch the PDF. I think that's something they're working on, but um, as of now, it doesn't work. Uh, and then I manually download the PDF, switch back to PaperPile, uh, and add it to my paper. In that case, like, there will be here, there's no PDF shown. Let's see if I can find one household. No papers found, oops. Let's take away the filter. As you can see, they all have PDFs. Let me see if I, if I can find one without, ah, PDF restrict. So in that case, uh, the import failed. So what I could do is, yeah, um, let me see, PDF restricted. Access to this PDF is restricted. Usually I, let me see. Ah, yeah, exactly. Now I have to select the first and then I can add a PDF. So I could download it from that website. Um, let me see. Let's go to the website. Let's look at the, at the reference itself. Oh, okay. It's a science direct reference publish in a journal from, of science direct. So what I can do is I first log in with my proxy of my university. I get free access to the paper. And now, as you can see, you know, um, PaperPal also provides um, Google Chrome users and Chrome users with an extension. Um, but now it tells me this article is already in your library. Of course it is. Um, but it is there without a PDF. So what I now manually have to do is, let me see again. Oh. In that case, I, even with my proxy URL, I cannot access the article. Hmm. But what I would basically do is, usually, I can then download it as a PDF, go here and select Add PDF, um, choose a file, choose a file, and then I would select it from, you know, from my download folder. In that case, could that be? But you know, it's just a fake now. It's not. It's not permanent. So this was quickly, briefly, you know, explaining my workflow on how I use PaperPile in, you know, con in conjunction with um, Google Docs and Lucidchart. Um, the combination of these three makes it a very strong tool for me, at least. I can work mobile, I can work from wherever I am. It's light on resources. Um, it's backed in the cloud, yes. You have to trust the cloud, and um, yes, it's maintained and stored at Google service. But you know, I, I I just personally believe I you know my household food waste thesis is um, was meant to be open source and, and open openly accessible anyway. Um, so I have nothing to hide with my thesis and um, with my academic work. I rather the contrary. I, I love to share it and um, make it publicly available with open access. So if you have any comments, um, then there's always, well, of course, comment on the video. And there's always the forum of PaperPie, forum.paperpie.com. They have a very friendly community, very friendly developers, um, and they're very responsive to feedbacks. As you can see here, I just like submitted one today. And I already got, well, not by a developer, but by another user, a supportive response. That you know, adding proxy support would be nice. Let's see if they implement my feature request. Um, so, looking forward to more, and um, see you next time.
goodbye.